Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad. I am an antique dealer, appraiser, I conduct estate sales, I do a lot of stuff related to the antique and vintage world, and I go shopping a lot because of that. And we are doing a bunch of shorter videos where we go to places that we've shopped before and look to see what's new, what's fresh, and talk a little more in depth about the types of things you see in real world antique and vintage malls and what they're selling for. So let's start with this set because this is really neat. I haven't actually seen this set before. This is Mikasa and it's by Ben Seibel who was a very famous American dinnerware designer. He worked for a bunch of companies. He did stuff for Raymore. Uh, he was really prolific. And this is a fun Mikasa pattern from the late 1970s. Mikasa is an up-and-coming collectible as far as dinnerware from the 70s, 80s goes. So I think that's something to look for. The chop plate is $60. The coffee pot, cream and sugar are $95 for the set. Um, so these are open stock prices. $10 for bowls, $22 for the gravy, and the plates look like they're in the... Um, $10 each range. Um, you know, for those fun, poppy 1970s patterns, people will pay those prices and they'll buy pieces open stock to match sets they already have. So you don't have to have a full set. Uh, here's something that's kind of fun. Now, we have a couple of different eras of copper luster here, and you notice some of it's silver luster later on. This is the first era. This is when it came out in about 1850. It was made in England. It was very popular there and in the United States because it was reflective. And so at a time when people had gas light or no indoor lighting at all, reflective surfaces were really important. Uh, so this became a big deal and it was sort of fancy looking. So this one's priced at 30. The prices have actually come down on this. Um, later years they started to paint them in more multiple colors. So this one's probably 1860 or 70s. This one's priced at $40. You don't see the uh, goblets as much. You notice there's no marks of company origin on them because they are before that was required. We didn't require that till the 1890s. But this one, in the 30s there was a revival of interest and they would do these white backgrounds with copper luster and little houses and scenes and these were done in England in the 30s so they do have a back stamp. And that one is Gray's Pottery. That one's only $11. So a fun area to collect and so much variety in Copper Luster. There's really a ton of it. Um, so you can find just about anything that interests you. Um, speaking of things that interest me, this case over here always has really fun stuff and I'm excited to see her. Theirs is not working. This is the first time I've seen one since the one that I got, which I bought in Syracuse, New York 30 years ago now. Mine did work. You press the button and she shakes around and makes your cocktail for you. They have $70 on it not working and that's because these battery operated things are so hard to find and especially she being sort of a go-go bunny. Uh, that's something that somebody would buy even in that condition because they're just hard to get. They've also got some really early comic books here. A lot of these are gold and silver age. Notice you're seeing really low numbers like number three Defenders is $150. Thor, this is number 12. Um, so these are pretty low numbers. That makes a big difference in collectability. Uh, and then when you uh, get on further then you're going to see higher prices and some of them are still going to sell for good money like Warlock which is number 178 but that's just a very very hard one to get. So uh, look for low numbers on comic books. Uh, what else is in here? Oh, Mego. Mego is definitely a bolo amongst toys right now. They're even doing new toys under a Mego brand. Uh, they're not made in uh, Japan and Taiwan like they used to be. They're made in China, so you can tell the difference. But these two back here are 1970s Mego figures. It's funny to me that Mego is a big thing because these were actually pretty inexpensive low-end and not considered by kids to be as well des detailed and designed back in the day, but they're selling for $45 to $80 now, so somebody has caught on to them. 
Now here I just want to give a plug since there's so many pretty pieces in one place. I still really like pink depression glass. Um, it's funny how the pink is more common in some parts of the country than others. We see pink in California a lot, but we see green in Washington and Oregon more. People have caught on to collecting the green again because the green fluoresces under a black light because it's got a little uranium in it. The pink you just have to like pink. It doesn't change colors, but it's a very pretty color as it is. And you see prices anywhere from the big Miss America set with the pitcher is $320 with all of those tumblers and stems, uh, but prices are as low as $16 on the Miss America Sherbert here. So it's still pretty collectible. Um, we're going to look for some more stuff to show you, and while we do that, I just want to thank you for joining us, and please ask you to do um, go ahead and subscribe, because that way you can click the bell to be notified of future videos, and that's how we can stay in touch with you. And give us a thumbs up and a like on this video if you're enjoying it. Now here's some more pretty glass, but this is a different era in here. Well, a couple different eras. But I wanted to point out this one, the Dugan Carnival Glass Bowl with the painting on the inside. You don't see a lot of painting on Carnival Glass. That wasn't done all that often, so that's unusual. That's why it's priced at $150. In the back, this Victorian, this Rubina Verde, where it goes from a greenish custard into the red, very hard to find. That one's priced at $550, but that will glow like crazy under a black light and be really good looking doing it. On the other hand, this bride's basket here, the cranberry with the opalescent edge and that nice wreath base, the Napoleonic wreath, only $125. The prices on Victorian bride's baskets have really come down. So if you like fancy glass, that's a great area to get some really beautiful things that are not very expensive at all. Um, let's see what we have back here. Well, I mentioned pink depression glass. Of course, here we have the green that reflects under the uh, black light, you'll see the green glow for the uranium. But I like these pieces here. These are hull pine cone, and these were done in the 1950s by the woman who did uh, all of their designs. She did all of these big swoopy 1950s designs. Her name was Louise Bauer. She was not related to Bauer pottery at all. She only worked for hull. This is $39.95. This used to be about a $75 piece. The modernists went really crazy for this stuff back in the 80s and 90s, and it's kind of been a sleeper ever since. So I think it's a good time to start picking this up because I see a new generation getting interested in 50s modern, and that is definitely completely along that line. There's a really nice, it's ebonized, but I like this Victorian piece. If you're going to have an etagere and you're really gonna show off your fancy stuff, what a great way of doing it. And this one is so inexpensive, I can't believe it. It is priced at $3.95. These used to sell for double that at estate sales. So I think for the, uh, you know, value for money is good on this stuff. Now this one has been uh, ebonized at some point, so it's a black finish, but that's actually pretty contemporary. And you know, even modernists are finding if you put one odd piece in a home, it'll sometimes really make an accent. and. Uh, you can get away with it with more modern things. Uh, we're going to come down here. This dealer has, uh, and this is a specialty of this mall, they have a lot of clocks and it's nice to have a bunch in one place. Um, and Sonia, like the one here, these were made in America. You see this uh, sort of tombstone shape. This is going to be 1890s. This one is priced, they're having a sale, so it's actually 20% off. It'd be about 150 for the parlor clock there. Uh, let's see, here's a fun one over here because this one is German and it is absolutely the way that German retro design from the 1950s and 60s looks. Their stereos were shaped like this, the clocks, the cabinets. This one is priced at about 120 but just a fun design and there are modernists who really see these. The idea that only people who like old-fashioned grandfather clocks collect clocks is just uh, not a true notion. On the other hand, a lot of people do prefer the old wall clocks. Um, this one's a nice one here, and again, only 165 minus 20%. This one's got a very nice stamped face here. This is German with black forest walnut in the case. This is going to date to about 1890, and honestly, that's a really good price on that. I sold one of these just a few years ago for about 250. So, um, you know, uh, there is money in clocks still if you have the right thing. 
This one is about $65 with the discount. They said it came out of an old church. This one is Japanese and it has a faux finish. This is actually not a real wood grain here. It's just painted to look like one. Um, so that's something a little bit different. It used to be people didn't look at the Japanese clocks, but they are different than the American and the European. And so now people are thinking they're interesting. Um, a couple of cuckoo clocks here. The important thing with these is these have been serviced. You've got um, $55 on the smaller one. And then this one, which is a little more elaborate, is priced at about $125. Cuckoo clocks are really tough to make run. If, you, if it's not working, it probably can't be made to work. So uh, you want to just get them if they're in good shape. Um, and while we're still in good shape and have a little time, I wanted to say uh, I really do appreciate all of my members and all of the extra support you give the channel. It's the one thing that as the seasons come and go on, YouTube stays constant for us. So we're really grateful for your contribution. Members get early access to videos at the level two level. And we also have a uh, we just have a lot of fun with it. And so it, please click the join button or look for memberships in the description. You can find out more about that. Okay, let's see what this banjo clock here looks like. This one is priced at 110. It's a Seth Thomas. These were very popular in the 1930s and 40s, and that's why you tend to see these very patriotic styles. Originally, they did one with Mount Vernon down here in the panel, and that sort of kicked off a series of patriotic ones. George and Martha Washington are depicted on them, Monticello, all sorts of things relating to the um, early uh, patriots. Now, of course, we're in Kentucky, so we're going to see Kentucky, Kentucky Derby glasses a lot. And what we're looking for are older ones, because uh, once you get back a little bit, here's 1982. Now, this one's $10, and that's where you start to see higher prices. 70s, 60s. You can always tell what year it is because the horse that won the last race is the last one listed. I don't see a lot here that are old, but there are some odd varieties. Um, this one, I believe, is 1977, the year Seattle Slough won. And there is a 74 version, which they don't have here, where they made a mistake and printed the name of one of the horses wrong and reprinted it later. And so the mistake is worth 20 bucks. So Kentucky glass, Derby glasses are definitely something to look for. Uh, let's see, back here I see something really fun and very sunny looking in this quilt. And we are in quilt company, in quilt country. We're right near the National Quilt Museum here in Paducah. This one with the orange fabric, it looks to me like this one is actually this big pinwheel. Looks like it's, or star, looks like it's 19... I think it looks like 30s, actually. At first I was thinking this, thinking this might be 70s, but it does not feel like polyester. It feels like all cotton and it has a narrow border. This one with these chartreuse colors is going to be 50s era. Someone did a lot of embroidery on that. And the prices on these seem to be somewhere in the $120 to $150 range. Now, of course, we're in the place where they're the most desirable because we are near the Quilt Museum. So uh, we're not expecting to see special bargains on those. On the other hand, we're also in a part of the country where we see primitive rakes and things, and this one's only marked at $22, so just for something different. Oh, this is great stuff, and I am really surprised to see the way that they have this marked. They have it marked MCM Atomic Divided Bull. This is Franciscan Starburst. This is the pattern you want to look for if you can find it in good condition. There's the Franciscan mark on the back. This is the most favored pattern of dinnerware amongst modernists. Now unfortunately this cookie jar lid is really smashed and it's a shame because uh, it would be worth 300 if it wasn't. But the ladle and some of these pieces that don't have the stars on can be really good things to look for because you will, they've got the full price, $65 on there. But you will sometimes see these pieces alone and they did make a couple of other patterns that have the same lid that doesn't have a design on it so you can get replacements like say you bought this little piece that is a sugar bowl and it didn't have a lid, you can use the lid off of Oasis and Duo and a couple of other Franciscan patterns to replace it. So um, it's even worth buying pieces and parts because it's so just really crazy cool. I met a woman who um, she said, oh, I want to show you something. And I said, what? And she had just bought a bunch of this and she rolled up her arm and she had this as her tattoo around her arm, <laughs> which I thought was pretty cool. And very 
very devoted. <laughs> so I guess she's going to collect that pattern forever because um, once you have it applied to your body, I guess you're kind of stuck, right? Oh, what am I missing here? Oh, yes. Well, this is a lovely name they've called it. They called it a vomit clock. Um, that's just terrible. But it was very popular. You could do get these kits where you would put these rocks and stones and it was this um, sort of a plastic, um, almost not fiberglass, but like an acrylic you could pour in and you could make these surrounds and then put a clock motor in. And you will see these with these crazy textures and backgrounds sometimes. And then next to it we have a time meter. This is the original digital clock where the digits just rolled around. This was it, and this is from about 1940. They, this is an English one. They had American ones as well at the same time. The, let's see here. This is kind of cute, a 50s vintage juice bottle with the little cap on the top. I like the original cap, 2250 on that. And then here is just the shade for a big old moon and stars lamp for 7850. If you broke your shade, this would be the place to come and get it. So I'm going to hold up this adorable little doll rocking chair, which they have $56 on, and say thank you so much for joining us for this. We will continue to do these short subjects when we hit places that we haven't been before, show you what's new and fresh, and talk a little more in depth, like we say, about what people in the real world are trying to get for these items that you're seeing out in the wild. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Check out the social media and links in the description. I'm George the Antique Nomad, and bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!